welcome to the Hell Bore Fiber podcast. My name is Vicky, and this is where I talk about everything I've been knitting and spinning and crafting in general. Sometimes there's other things. But yeah, uh, hello if you're new. Um, welcome if you're returning. If you're returning, then you know I haven't uploaded in a little while. So we're back in the new year. Um, though we've all probably forgotten about the turning of the year and everything, but anyway. I uh, just want to say sorry to everybody who commented after the last video. I don't think I replied to a single comment. At least if I did, I don't remember. I know there's a lot that need to be answered and hopefully by the time this goes up, they'll all be answered. But yeah, not on. Um, I intend to do better from now on. I am going to talk about knitting and spinning today and the knitting first, spinning second and the subcategories would be FOs, whips and future plans for this year. I am wearing my first tanspon garment that I made in spring last year, I think. Uh, this is the Miserina, I think is how we say it, by Boylan Knitworks, Caitlin Hunter. Um, I haven't bought one of her patterns since a while ago, but um, yeah, I don't intend to, but I will probably make this again. I wear this the most it's super light yet warm i spun the yarn it's a two ply it's all two ply uh merino and silk are like the main fibers but there's some bamboo in the in one of the plies of the main color and also some sari silk so it gives it that kind of tweedy look that you can see um but the contrast color is just merino silk and all the fiber was from spin jones and I'll add the details down below. Knitting FOs, I have three. Um, so yeah, my first one is this sock. Uh, this is the Primrose Pudding Sock. Can't remember the designer's name, it'll be down below and on the screen. Um, I love this sock pattern. It's so pretty. You knit the cuff, and then you put it to the side and you knit this bit and then you knit them together and then you put them to the side and then you knit uh, the rest of the sock. You start knitting this roll bit and then you add them together and then you continue down the foot. Um, I added a contrast heel and I was trying to use up my scraps so I that's the reason for all the different colours. This is Katya Socks Yeah. This is Clarendon Sock by Townhouse Yarns. It's a merino cashmere nylon, so it's uh, pilly, but it's really pretty and soft. And the colorway is single malt. And this is Curio Stitches Sock Yarn in the colorway Renaissance. I knit my, oh, what are they called? Moonology Socks in this yarn. Actually, in these two yarns, these are leftovers from those, so... Yeah, I thought these would be too small, but they actually fit grand. They're really nice, um... Inside my Doc Martens, my Doc Martens shoes, because they, like, poke out, and this is so pretty. And I plan to knit another pair of these, and I'll talk about that later. So, yeah. I don't know how well you can see. I'm recording on a new camera I got for Christmas, so hopefully it's working well. But, yeah, I do love these socks. They're just so pretty. And I have a few other patterns by that designer that I want to knit. So yeah, Primrose Pudding Socks. First F.O. Second F.O. is another pair of socks. It's, now these are crazy on the blockers compared to those ones, but these are the Lunaria Socks, I believe. The design name, designer's name is Agata, and I can't remember her surname, but again, on the screen, um, these are probably the fanciest socks I've ever made in terms of, you know, construction and, yeah, construction. <laughs> um, they were very fun because I'd never knit a sock like this before. I hadn't knit a heel flap and gusset sock in a really long time. So, like, I'd been completely putting off knitting heel flap and gusset socks just because I didn't want to pick up the stitches even though... 
you know, picking up stitches is grand. I just didn't want to do it. So when I found out this sock, there is no picking up stitches. I don't know how to explain it. Everybody, I don't know. It's just very fun. It's, um, so it's knit toe up. It's got the gusset on the sole. So it goes shoop. And then, so you cast on using Turkish cast on. I think that was my first time in ages, like in years, doing a Turkish cast on. And then you uh, make one left, make one right. Pretty sure, incre yeah, increase up to for the toe. And then you probably can't see this. Uh, every other one here without the ends woven in. So, yeah, you just increase up to where your gusset would start, but you do it on the bottom of the heel, and it's like a V, and it's super pretty. And then I think this is a French heel because it's really prettily rounded, like all these little details. And then slip stitch heel flap, and you're just decreasing as you go along this. It's very fun. I don't know. I don't know why I'm trying to explain it. I can't explain things as if you... If you've been here before, you know I can't explain things, but um, it's a super pretty sock. I am not a confident lace knitter. This was really simple um, and really fun. I think I'm starting to enjoy lace more after these socks. Um, so yeah, I would totally recommend these. They're very fun to knit. Um, the yarn is Ullen Sock Light in the colorway Passe. Um, Kind of a light fingering. I knit these on a 1.75 millimeter needle. Um, it's kind of been my go-to because I've been wanting tighter gauge socks and I'm normally a 60 stitch sock knitter, but a lot of the ones, I think this was a 64 stitch. So I've kind of been going down because of that. I think I knit the Permos putting socks on a two millimeter, which would be my normal one, but I'm not sure looking at them now. I'll check and put it on the screen if I even took note of it. But yeah, um, I love these socks. They're super pretty, super fancy to me anyway. And I haven't worn them yet, so I need to get on that. Yeah, I want to knit another pair of these for myself in a solid. Just so I can see the pattern better, because it does kind of get lost with this variegated yarn. Variegated speckled yarn. Um, but yeah socks very happy with them i hope i'm not completely covering my face all the time anyway third fo is a sweater i finished a sweater in january i'm pretty sure before the month was out um it's not blocked yet so i will get the full effect but oh i'm so happy with this it's so it's such a nice weight um i was calling this my scooby-doo sweater because for some reason this contrast color reminds me of Scooby Doo, and I don't know what it is. I think it's just those co the colors in the show in general. I don't know, but um, yeah, this is the silver lining sweater by Jennifer Steingas. You can probably recognize that it's a Jennifer Steingas pattern just by looking at it. I hope it's coming out nicely in the camera, and that you can see the pattern because close up you can't really see the pattern because the contrast color is so variegated. But um. Yeah, I knit this, I think I knit, I knit size D on the recommended needles, which I don't usually do, um, so that was nice. Usually my gauge is too loose, but I think I am tightening up the more I knit. Um, I knit it with Drops Lima, Lima, the colorway, the color is 4377. Um, it's a DK weight yarn. It's a wool alpaca blend. It's super warm. It's really nice and hefty. Contrast color is uh, Whispery Worsted by Townhouse Yarns in the colorway 15. And it's a, it's a merino silk single ply worsted weight yarn. So as you can see, it's super fragile and they make that very clear on the website and you should know in general if you're going to be knitting with a single ply worsted weight yarn that's 50% merino and 50% silk, it's going to be fragile. So it's pilling quite a bit just from 
knitting with it and moving it around and stuff. Um, but I did have to rip back the first section of the color work because I was getting my color dominance wrong. So that did that made that made it uh, very kind of pilly. But um, I don't care. I love this. I can't wait to block it. Uh, I didn't do any. I don't think I did any modifications other than add uh, a split hem, which kind of looks dodgy at the moment because it needs to be blocked. Yeah, I think the split hem was the only modification I did. I did the bind off backwards so that instead of getting the like chain of knit stitches across the front, I got like a chain, uh, like a, a row of bumps. So it kind of ties in better with the neckline I think I, I liked it better than um getting like a, basically a crocheted chain look around the hand I wasn't mad about that but yeah I'm happy with the way it's turned out I can't wait to wear it um one thing I know I've talked before about uh sizing and having issues with sizing I think this pattern recommended like four to six inches positive ease. I am a 40 inch bust and I went for uh, a 40 inch. The, I think, I'm pretty sure the size D was around 40 inch. So there's not much ease around my bust and I really prefer that fit. I find if I knit sizes with the recommended ease, they kind of swamp me a bit and they're not as flattering. So yeah, the fit journey is ongoing and never ending, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. So yeah, yeah, toasty sweater. And I need it today because there's actually a storm going on. I hope you can't hear it too much and it's not that annoying. Yeah, that's all my knitting FOs. And I have one whip that I can show. I have some gift knits on the go, but Lauren, you might be watching, so I cannot show them. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to show my personal whip that's happening. This is another Jennifer Steingas. Hope that's not too boring. But, um, I've had this on my to knit list for a really long time. Um, yeah, I talked about it in like my first episode or something. I don't know. I definitely talked about it before anyway. Um, this is the Garden Gate sweater. And I think that's the back yeah oof. um I've almost got the body done I think I just need to knit like another inch and then start the ribbing um I'm really happy with how this is turning out I think again I did size d um so going for not so much ease around my bust and I really like the way it's fitting at the moment I really can't wait to get the sleeves on and just wear it this is my first fingering weight sweater uh yeah because I mean this the miserine I'm wearing isn't long sleeved so um yeah yeah I guess they're both sweaters are they I don't know but I'm so excited to wear this because I get the most wear out of my miserina and it's also a fingering weight uh pullover-y sweatery garment-y thing um Oh, what am I going to say? Uh, yeah, so I know I'm going to get a lot of wear of this. I love that it's light and warm at the same time. Um, I am knitting this... I think I'm knitting this on the recommended needles as well. I might have gone down... Uh, you know, 0.25 of a millimetre. Not sure. can't remember. Uh, it'll be on my Ravelry page. And I might just say it blue. Um... Yeah, I'm knitting this. The main colour is Drops Flora. It's just black or colour 06. Um, I think I'm going to have some of that left over when I finish this. So I'm kind of thinking what will I make out of it. But anyway, and the contrast colour is some of my hand spun. Um, this is from Yara Fibres. I got it for Christmas. Not last Christmas, but the Christmas before from my future mother-in-law. Oh yeah, I'll talk about that at the end. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a two ply, pretty, it's pretty much a fingering weight. It's, uh, I spin my yarn, um, 
I'm usually spinning from comb top, so it's it's worth it prep, but I spin it woolen because I leave a lot of the twist into the draft zone. Um, I might post a, a video about me spinning sometime if you're interested. Let me know. Um, but yeah, I love I love this fiber. I think I always planned to knit this sweater with that fiber spun up even before I was gifted it. Like this is just mm, it's been on my to knit list for so long. I'm so happy I'm finally doing it. The other day I lost my knitting mojo, like seriously, while I was working on this. I think it was because I thought it wasn't going to fit or something like that. But um, the next day I was fine again because I tried it on that night and it's like, it's grand. It's actually grand. I am a bit worried that the, the puckering I've got in my colour work might not block out. But at the same time, I think it'll, I think it'll be okay. It's probably, it's, it's going to probably going to block out bigger than the the recommended size the the schematic and the pattern for my the for the size I'm knitting um I tend to block my stuff more aggressively and part of it as well is that I don't I don't usually block my swatches I did actually block my swatch for um the silver lining sweater but I only blocked it after I'd finished the sweater because I wanted to know if it would go through the spin cycle on the washing machine okay and it did it didn't change in size at all actually it just softened up a little bit so yeah I did actually swatch but my normal swatches they're just like this um this is actually a pretty lazy one because I did it flat but I usually do a, a fake in the round one you know where you carry the the really long floats along the back. Um, yeah. What was I saying? Uh, <laughs> my brain. Um, yeah, but because I don't, because I don't block my swatches, I usually don't know exactly what the, the thing is going to turn out like. But I usually aim for the swatch. Non the not the swatch I do do that isn't blocked. Aim for it to be smaller than what I would like because I like to give my garments a nice blocking. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing with this when it goes to be blocked. So yeah, my garden gate sweater as it is at the moment. Um yes, I'm looking forward to knitting on that for the rest of today probably. In between gift knitting and stuff because definitely when I'm sitting there like watching YouTube and sorry there's fluff flying around so I'm scratching my face um I'm just going I really need to rest I forget to rest my hands and but yeah anyway this is going quite quickly the gauge is 22 stitches to 10 centimeters or four inches which is pretty loose right uh this was 24 stitches and it's probably not the correct gauge but yeah, this is really loose, so it goes really fast for a fingering weight sweater, I imagine, given that I've only knit two fingering weight garments. But anyway, that's enough about that. That's my current whip. Knitting pads. I have quite a few. Um, I have quite a bit of yarn left over from the silver lining sweater. For some reason, I used just over half of it. Um... I bought 14 balls of Belima or Lima and I had uh, just under six left over. I don't know what kind of mats I did when I was ordering that yarn. I am kind of cautious about it sometimes, but I need to get better at that because can't be having that much leftover yarn every single time. But with the leftovers, I plan to make another ranunculus. Um... I, I go from being one of those people who are like, I don't need another renunc renunculus. <laughs> How can people need so many renunculi, renunculuses? Um, yeah, I go from that to being like, I need another renunculus. Um, because I wear them, I have two and I wear them a lot, especially this one, which I'm going to show you now. This is my first renunculus. It's knit from, you know, a seri uh, Hayfield Aran those big 400 gram balls um 
this is probably covered in stuff because I wear this all the time. It's I throw it on all the time at home. It keeps me nice and cozy. I usually wear a big cardigan over it. Um, I'm pretty sure when I knit this, there was only one size in the pattern. I'm not sure though. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, I knit this at the start of 2021. Um, so yeah, it's super loose gauge. It's felted quite a bit. It's gone into the tumble dryer loads of times. It's really nice and soft. It's uh, it's 20% wool, 80% uh, acrylic, if I didn't say that already. And um, yeah, I love it. I want to knit um, my next one with the leftover Lima. And also I have this mohair in my stash. I've never knit with mohair before. Um, this will be my first time. I'll explain why this is in my stash in a minute. <laughs> but yeah, I'm planning on holding these together. I'm not sure how it's going to go. This is uh, Abby Lace. 72 kid 72% kid mohair, 28% 28 silk. It's from Townhouse Yarns and the shade is Hushabye. This is the same purple from my silver lining, which I've probably said a million times already. Um so yeah, I'm gonna hold them together and I'm gonna base the newer Nunculus off of this one. I'm gonna change a few things. I'm not gonna do the raglan increases. I'm just going to split for the sleeves straight after this last pattern round. Um, maybe I, I might knit a few rounds plain, but yeah. Um, I'll, f I'll figure out like a percentage based on another other patterns that I've knit, like how many stitches to use for the arms and how many for the body. But yeah, I hope to make it a bit more fitted so that it it's there my back doesn't get cold and um I'm gonna do sleeve increases as well and I'm gonna be needing the smallest size which is for a 46 inch bust or like for a 46 inch hem uh body because yeah that's how that pattern works um but obviously my finished garment won't be 46 inches around the body hem because I am not doing the raglan increases so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out that's the plan I think there's plenty of ease in it anyway um yes so I'm probably gonna start that this weekend um based on the other ranunculuses ranunculi that I've knit it won't it won't take that long and it'd be a nice break I'd say to have the bigger needles compared to the 3.75s or whatever I'm using for my um garden gate so yeah now to explain why that mohair is in my stash I'm going to talk about the next sweater I plan to knit after those two are done it's kind of a scary sweater but anyway I'm going to show you the air so I've got oh so I've got these, they're super pretty. This is a uh, Merino Singles yarn by Ushatita, a German indie dyer, I think. Um, I got them from This Is Knit. These were, um, I won a competition with This Is Knit last year. I got a hundred euro voucher for the shop and that's this, these, I got four skeins of this um specifically for the wave break sweater by unwind knitwear um and that pattern which i'll put a picture of it's got a mohair it's got some mohair details on it it's not held with the with the main yarn but it's got some details on it and i went you when you're buying online you can't tell but i originally bought this to go with these and as you can probably see the they don't go together <laughs> and I was like damn it um yeah so I had to find another one which is really hard I I started looking at Etsy and stuff for other 
indie dyers because I thought I could find a nice pretty kind of speckly one but I didn't find much luck with that um but I eventually found I eventually found this mohair by Filcalana and this is their Tilia yarn and the color is antique rose I think um I think it's a new one but it goes really nicely and that's so pretty I just I love these colors and I do not wear pink a lot even though I love pink I love these rose goldy kind of mauvey shades but it can be hard with my skin and my hair to get it to work on me but I think these will be okay I think so hopefully I'm knitting it anyway so yeah I'm really excited but really intimidated to knit that um we'll see how it turns out uh so yeah that will be after my current whips are done last knitting project i have planned is a shawl um this is a bunch of holes super soft this is jasper this is bokara and this is ember these are so pretty like this one not so complex but these two super complex but you see <laughs> and yeah this has got lovely nice shades in it you may have seen this if you watched another episode because i was making a the main sweater by her name has gone from my mind but um i have to say i gave up on that project so we're using it for a shawl now and that shawl is going to be the golden willow shawl by leslie ann robinson um it's a lovely real shawl i've knit one of her shawls before the coffee at the grand uh stole it's i loved knitting it um can't wait to knit brioche again brioche brioche um, i hope it's not too difficult it's been a long while but um we'll see so that's exciting i'm not sure when i'm going to cast it on but it's definitely happening and i've got this yarn specifically for it i hope that these go nicely together looking at this right now i'm not very sure but let me know what you think i i'm not so sure but we'll see all right i'm gonna move on to spinning now and i'm gonna show you what i'm working on at the moment actually i'm not gonna show you what i'm working on <laughs> at the moment first I'm going to show you what should be a finished spin, but it's a, a, just a spinning fail. <laughs> this is that silk I was spinning before. Um, 100% silk. I was going to do a two-ply from a center pole ball, and I just did what I normally do, which is shove my my little yarn cake, then I wind off my wheel onto this spindle just drop spindle just so that it keeps it together and stops it from flying around but I messed up when winding my my little cake off of the wheel because I messed with the tension a few times during the um the, the ball winding and it just messed the thing up completely it's a little bit better I'm getting there slowly but surely I just pick this up and wind some more into this thing and untangle things I will get it off eventually um, and then I'll just split it onto two of these thingies and just do the two ply then. Thank God silk is so strong because <laughs> if this was wool, I just wouldn't be able, um, it would be breaking and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. But yeah, that's a spinning fail first to start the spinning section off. Now I'm going to show you what I'm working on at the moment, which will hopefully not be such a disaster. I'm working on, so I'm working on a a three ply fingering weight yarn um these will be the three plies um so the first the first single is done and on this bobbin this was either a merino bamboo blend or a merino viscose blend got it from my mam for christmas it's from yarn and chen yarn yarn and chen 
and Etsy, Yarnikin, Yarnikin. It's a German shop on Etsy. Really pretty fiber on there. Um, I will be getting more for her since I can't buy fiber from my favorite UK shop so so often anymore because of the customs charges. But um, yeah, this is super pretty and shiny. And as you can see, it's a bit fluffy looking. That will be from my woolen drafting. Um, so yeah, there's 100 grams here. And it's ply number one. I tried to spin it as finely as I could. Um, the second ply I'm spinning at the moment. This is what I have left of it. Um, it's super sparkly. Can you see that? I hope so. Um, it's a blend of different shades of blue Cardale and this multicolored nylon, trilobal nylon, I think it's called. Um, it's lovely and soft. It's so easy to spin. Like you can just the. I know staple length isn't actually the correct word, but you know the staple length of the fiber is. It's lovely. I've only spun Cardale once, and that was ages ago when I first started when I first got my wheel. So yeah, I've been really enjoying this and I love the the shades of blue that are in here. It gives it some serious depth and I'm so excited to see how this looks in the final spin. Paired with this. Very exciting. And um, the last uh, lot of singles will be this. Oh yeah, that was also from Yarn Chen, Yarn and Kin. Both from my mom for Christmas, so thank you ma'am. And the last single will be this. It's Superwash Merino from Curio Stitches back when she was dying. Um, it's in the Blue Moon colorway. Um, the other two are not Superwash. This is, I'm not too scared about putting them together. I mean, nothing's going to stop me from doing it now. If you do know, like, what's the worst case scenario of doing that, please let me know. Um, but I'm doing it anyway. And this is, I just want to go to sleep on this. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to see how these will spin up together. That's kind of my favorite part of, my favorite part of, uh, spinning is probably finishing the skeins and hanging them up and seeing what they look like and like feeling the weight of the spun yarn all dry and ready to be caked up and knitted into something. But my second favorite part of spinning is picking out colors, spinning them, and then plying them together and seeing what kind of yarn you get. So I'm very excited for this. And hopefully I do end up with a fingering weight yarn. It's, you know, again, hand spinning, it's never perfect, but fingers crossed. It'll be my first three ply fingering if I do actually manage it. Again, trying to spin my singles as finely as I can. Um, Not perfect, but we'll see. Very excited about it. Um, and I am, I do have a sweater in mind for this finished spin and it's going to need a contrast color and I think the contrast color is going to be this. I got this for Christmas too off my mom. Oh my God. I wanted this for so long. This is another one of the ones from Yara Fibers on Etsy. Pretty sure this is just Merino and Selena. It's got... It's a blend of red merinos and red sparkly Selena. I'm not sure if you can see that. Because I can't see what you can see. But it is so pretty. And it's so soft. And I'm planning it I'm planning to use it as a contrast colour with that other spin that I'm working on at the moment for the Fatherland sweater by Handmade Closet. Um, I love the colour work on that pattern and I hope to have enough yarn for it. I've got 300 grams of the main colour that I'm spinning up and I've got 100 grams of the contrast colour. So we'll see, I'll make it work somehow. I'll crop it or, you know, do something with it to save yarn. Um, yeah. So beyond that, I have one more split splitting. I have one more spinning plan. Um, 
lined up for this year. I curio stitches again from back when she was dying. It's a bunch of merino nylon. It's merino nylon. And I am planning to do a sock spin. Um, oh, <laughs> it's so soft. Um, oh, it's really pretty and insanely soft. But yeah, I'm planning to do an intentional sock spin. Um, Magdanet's, I think it was her latest podcast. She was showing that she did this crazy sock spin that had like a load of twists in it. And you like spin two singles in one direction and another spingle, spingle. I can't speak today. And another single in another direction. And then you spin them all together and it's supposed to create a stronger sock yarn. She said it was not pleasant to do because of the high twist. I guess I'm going to try anyway. So yeah. And because this, this is merino nylon, um, yeah, I thought I might as well. So, yeah. Socks. These, this will be socks. Um, the last thing I have to show is maybe kind of boring, but it's just some acquisitions I got for my wheel. I've been planning on getting them for ages. So fine. So happy to finally have them. Um, I got two extra bobbins which I really needed and I got two new worlds and finally I got a bigger nitty noddy so I'm going to just briefly show them so these are my two new worlds this seems just huge to me um this is the slow whirl for my spinning wheel the Kromsky Fantasia Fantasia I'm not sure how you say it and this is the fast whirl which is like it seems really kind of scary actually because it's tiny but um I have some Raimi in my stash that I want to spin and I think this would be handy as and it might be handy for the sock spin or any future you know silk I want to spin I don't know I don't think I'm going to be spinning silk again anytime soon after that last one but we'll see um and I got this because I want to try art yarn at some stage I'd love to do um you know coiled yarn what's that called coiled yarn um it just looks very satisfying to me. And I want to try spin some bigger yarns. And maybe the... I think the slow whirl will help. I'm not sure. I just want to experiment. And I had these on my wish list for a really long time. And I found a store that sold them all. So yeah, I got them. Um, Yeah, and I got a new Nitty Naughty. So this was the Nitty Naughty I've been working with for the past year. It's the... Again, from Kromsky. It's their medium nitty knotty. Um and I was it's it's finished as well, so it's varnished or oiled or something. Um it was too small for like the hundred gram skeins that I was spinning and they kept slipping off here and it was really annoying and I knew it was too small and I had to get a bigger one. Um I was just waiting till I could find somewhere to get all of this stuff I needed in one place. So yes, this is their medium one, but I finally have they're a large one. I don't even know if you can see them. <laughs> this there's something so wonderful about Nitty Nodies. They you just feel I don't know, powerful or something. I don't know what it is. Spinning is wonderful and uh Nitty Nodies are too. Um this is not finished. I'm really happy with that. I hope it means the yarn won't slip off the way it was doing on the finished Nitty Naughty I had, but also the fact that this is the correct size for the skeins I will be making it should help a lot and I shouldn't have that problem but yeah I'm delighted with this this is gonna make my life so much easier um I just hope that my my yarn swift will be able to expand big enough to hold these skeins but I'm sure it'll be okay um so yeah that's all of the knitting and spinning content um quick life update started my new job in January it's going okay. I love the actual work itself. I don't love other things about the job. Um, it's still up in the air if I'm going to leave or not. I think by the end of the year I will because I got engaged two weeks ago. Yeah, about two weeks ago now. Um, very exciting. Um, I did not realise that people... <laughs> take marriage so seriously people's reactions have been wild because when myself and my boyfriend were talking about it we it wasn't a surprise or anything we've been planning it kind of 
um but yeah crazy hearing people's reactions but yeah kind of what else, we kind of figured what else would we be doing there is also tax benefits in ireland to marrying because we're single people don't exist um that's a whole issue unto itself but yeah it's gonna be good we're planning we're saving for a mortgage together before we even you know it just makes sense right now and um it was fun shocking everybody and everybody was very happy so yeah yeah that's my that was the biggest piece of news. It was a crazy week after that. I think work was like the worst part. Telling people to work was... Whoa, that took it out of me. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes you'd be wishing that you didn't say anything. But at least it made some people happy. Um, yeah, is that it? I think that's it. Um, I've just been knitting away dealing with work and yeah starting to plan all the stuff involved with this so oh this is my nana's ring um it's not her engagement ring or anything it's just it's one that i'm wearing around my neck for years and now it's around my ring finger so yeah i think that's all i have to say hope everybody's keeping well hope i hope you're happy to be moving into spring and out of winter i know i am I'm um, trying to get my routines out of the sads of winter and into the bright new stuff of spring and summer. I hate the, s- the sun and the heat, but at the same time, I hate the heat. I don't so much hate the sun because I know I need it for my energy. And But, um, yeah, it's a weird transition. Ugh, it's a weird, it's a weird time. And it's very stormy today. I probably said that already. Um, but that's been nice. Yeah, I think I should stop waffling now. Thanks for watching, if you've watched this far, especially. Um, I hope to chat with you all in the comments. If you still want to talk to me after me not replying to you for like two months, maybe, nearly. Um, hopefully I have a lot to show you the next time I'm back. And hopefully it won't be so long next time. So yeah. Take care. Um, have a great, have a great time. Have a great day. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Signing off. Bye.